So, Emily wanted to see an intro to hacking STM32F modules next, so who am I to argue? I always like to have a real project when I'm figuring out new technology like this, so I homed in on this request from Patreon supporter Gregorio to change how Platts does chords. It wasn't quite as straightforward as the Grids hack, and I had to piece together information from a few sources to figure all this out, but I'll try and keep this guide as straightforward as possible. My name is Michael Forrest, and this is Leaving the Laptop, a series about personalizing your music hardware setup so you can play it live without being connected to a laptop. So here's what you're going to need. A computer that can run VirtualBox, a Platts, an STM32F development board like this, some headers like these, some jumper cables like these, a soldering iron, some solder, and something to loosen nuts like some pliers. And if you don't want to scratch your module's faceplate, a spanner head screwdriver like this should work. I didn't have one myself, now I've got a scratched Platts. There's a blog post with affiliate links for all the bits and pieces, but don't use those. Support an independent business, because I'll probably never reach Bezos minimum £25 threshold anyway. Right, so here's the plan. First we'll set up VirtualBox, then we'll add a new connector to the Platts PCB, then we'll connect Platts to a development board, then we'll connect that to VirtualBox, and then we'll build and upload the code onto the board. Then we'll try a couple of hacks. First we'll set up an alternative chord layout, then we'll convert the chords layout engine to use just intonation instead of equal temperament. Whatever that means. Step one, set up VirtualBox. This is the same process as I showed in the last video, so I'll go through it quickly. You need to get Git, get the mutable dev environment, get VirtualBox in the VirtualBox extension pack, run Vagrant up, and jump in with Vagrant SSH. There's more details in my other video, so just follow that along up to about the four minute mark. Step two, add a connector to Platts. Unlike Grids, Platts doesn't come with a header to connect a programmer, so we need to add one ourselves, up here. So you, you can pull off these four main knobs, unscrew these four nuts and these 12 little knurled nuts from the jack sockets and it should come apart, giving you access to the top of the PCB. Now you can solder in a header. Make sure you ground yourself first by touching a radiator or something and just try not to touch anything you don't need to. You want the pins and the solder pads to be hot enough to melt the solder onto them. Don't drip solder on, that won't be a good connection. And once that's on, you can put everything back together. Step three, connect plats to the development board. As per these instructions, we need to connect the four SWD lines of the development board to the four programming lines of the plats. But where actually are these connections? I found the pad labels in the circuit board diagram here. Reset is at the top, then SW clock, then SWD IO and ground. In the manual for my development board, I searched for SWD and found this part showing which pin is which. I also saw that I needed to remove two jumpers to use this programming mode, so I pulled them off and put them back half on so I didn't lose them. Now you can connect the plats to the development board using these female to female jumper cables, checking the guides to make sure that you connect each pin on one board to the pin with the same name on the other board. The pins are in a different order on each board, so be careful. <laughs> By the way, I still don't know what SWD actually stands for at this point. I just know it's a thing I need to use to connect these things. Step four, connecting the development board to the mutable dev environment on VirtualBox. So you need to connect the board to your computer. You need to connect the board to your computer. Make sure your computer can see it. Mine put a drive on my desktop and I could also see it via about this Mac system report under the USB section. Um, I'm not sure what you have to do on Windows, but just make sure that Windows can see it first. Now we're gonna need to make sure that VirtualBox can see it by going into Vagrant SSH, so you're inside the mutable dev environment and typing LSUSB, which lists the USB ports. You should see something about an ST-Link device, but if not, you'll need to add it by launching VirtualBox, clicking USB and selecting the right device from this list and it should say ST-Link something. Then you'll need to restart with Vagrant Halt, Vagrant Up, Vagrant SSH and then try LSUSB again. In my case I could then see my development board as ST-Link V2.1 Nucleo F blah 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 and I knew that was connected. Meanwhile make sure that Platts is happy with all this too. It should still be possible to play while it's connected. If not try disconnecting the development board before powering on Platts and then reconnect it while Platts is running. Step 5. Building the code. On the mutable site it says to set the right program interface variable in programming.inc but that file doesn't actually exist anymore so you need to check github where it shows that you need to export these as environment variables. There are two different ST-Link versions, v2 and 2.1 and I saw that my version needed version 2.1 when I used LSUSB before so I had to use export pgm interface equals ST-Link dash v2 dash 1 instead of just dash v2. And then referencing the original guide you should be able to use make dash f plats make file up upload to upload the code. It takes a few seconds but there'll probably be a flashing light to reassure you and then Platt should be playable once the upload's finished. So there you go. If things don't quite work, don't forget to search the Mutable Instruments forum because I always forget about it and end up annoying Emily instead.
but hopefully you got it all working and it's time to start hacking. Part six, an easy change. So Gregorio wanted this alternative chord arrangement and I actually found the chord engine file was already set up with this arrangement and I just needed to change one line of code. So I uncommented define John chords and then just ran that make command again and, and it worked, it was up there. Next is where electronics, coding, music theory and physics combine to create the world's smallest niche on YouTube. So if you are getting something out of this, please have mercy on me by doing the subscribe -y, ringy bell thing, because otherwise you're guaranteed to miss my next videos. The algorithm completely ignores my existence. Also, did I mention that I have a Patreon and no real job? Part seven, implementing just intonation. You may be aware that keyboard instruments generally use a special tuning invented a few hundred years ago called equal temperament. This tuning makes it easy to compose music with lots of key changes. Bart went nuts with it, for example. But while it's a very flexible tuning for a keyboard instrument, it's a harmonic compromise. You're almost always very slightly out of tune. But if you don't actually want to change key a lot, then just intonation will give you true harmonies as dictated by the laws of physics, which sound really good. I tracked down this guide showing the frequency ratios for each note interval. You can see how the just intonation values on the left are purer ratios, like six over five or nine over eight, versus the values on the right, where it's just a lot of decimal points. I noticed that there was a line that converted semitone values to ratios in the Platt's source code. So I created a new table called chords as ratios. And then instead of looking up the semitone values, I just went straight to the ratios. So in this new table, I replaced each semitone interval with the just harmonic ratio and then built it. And it worked pretty much first time. I wasn't quite sure it was right. So I built it as a WAV and sent it off to Gregorio to try because his whole rig is in just intonation. And he was very happy with it. So that was good. Coming back to my rig, uh, there were two reasons I wasn't quite sure about it, I think. First is that I initially didn't understand what to expect, so I was just changing chords on the module and not realising that this will clash under just intonation. But another problem was that my plats had lost its calibration when I changed the firmware, but thankfully I was able to use my controller keyboard to play like 1 volt and 3 volt as C2 and C4 into the module to recalibrate it and everything sounded nice again. But there we have it. If you want to try out this hack, there's a download link for the WAV. I put it behind a pay what you want thing, just in case this is worth a few quick to you but you can put zero in if you want it's no problem and if you do want to come and find me i do coding streams and play live music on twitch pretty regularly so come and say hi and here is my very short list of patreon supporters david siegel is a hero sharon's a hero and gregorio is my latest hero see you next time bye